I'm standing here with Senator Tarr, who just watched the premiere of Equilibrium TV, and I was surprised to learn, as you were talking, how much of an advocate you are of renewable energy and energy efficiency. Where does that come from? Well, it just comes from an interest in uh, science and trying to be uh, more independent of carbon and fossil fuels. And what's amazing to me is how doable a lot of these things are. And so I've become an advocate because I really think it's the right approach for the future, for all of us, for sustainability, for economics, uh, for our quality of life. And it's hard not to be an advocate when you see great things that are going on, like the things that are in the episode that I just watched. So what are some ideas for helping to democratize um, the accessibility of renewable energy? Because it seems like there's been some hurdles, um, at least with the laws that were in place um, in getting everybody on board with that? Well, that's a great question, and certainly we've been a leader among the states, particularly in terms of installed solar generation capacity, and that's been largely because we've had very generous incentives. But the difficulty is that you may not be able to take advantage of those incentives if you're someone of low or moderate income. So what we really have to do is encourage more community-based projects, either with a community development corporation or with neighborhoods getting together, and we still have a long way to go in terms of providing the appropriate incentives for that. We have some in terms of what we've been doing in the net metering credit, but we have a long way to go uh, toward trying to maybe offer programs to help people finance those projects and then pay them off over the long term, or having people be able to actually share in excess solar production. Uh, in the episode we just watched, we saw that John is producing more than he needs. His bill is zero, and he has a significant role to play in being able to share that. So one of the things we're exploring is to see if we can essentially create banks that allow folks that are producing excess energy to be able to share that with folks that may not have the ability to make the major investment in starting a solar project, but who very much want to participate in its benefits. So we've got ways that uh, we can explore that will help us to finance those projects, but also ways that we can look at to help people maybe not build the project themselves, but be part of a community of interest that drives them to come into being and then get the benefit of them in the future. Wow, that's a thrilling idea. Just think of the power in galvanizing the residents of Massachusetts that have already installed solar, Absolutely. let alone the ones that haven't. Um, it could change the world. It, it qu unquestionably could, and as we stand here in Gloucester, we're in a community that's currently engaged in a project called the Gloucester Community Solar Challenge of trying to help folks through education and communication understand how they can do solar installations. And that's really, I think, the cutting edge and the first step in what can happen in terms of helping to proliferate uh, the production of solar energy. And we haven't even talked yet about things that we can do in terms of weatherization. And one of the things about John's house is it's extremely well insulated with a good air handling system so that those two things can work together to create a good livable climate. Those things, in many ways, are often low-hanging fruit. They're easy to accomplish, but you need a little bit of understanding and you need some resources to get it done. And that's why I, uh, I'm always proud to work with an organization like Action in Incorporated, which is here in Gloucester and around the North Shore, helping folks do simple things like air sealing. We, we heard both of you talk just briefly about air sealing. Again, a relatively easy thing to do from a technology standpoint, but a more difficult thing to do if you don't understand the basics of it and you don't have the ability to finance that. So there are so many steps, but I think we have to remember that generation is important, but conservation is equally as important because the energy we save is as valuable as the energy we produce. Boy, it's, it sounds so inspiring to hear you say that, and it also sounds like you have some experience of your own with energy conservation and uh, thinking about ways to live more sustainably. Could you share a little bit about what your house is like well, with regard sure. to those? I, I'm actually in construction uh, right now, and as I was watching the episode, I was thinking about all of the things that my home that's under construction has in common with what John did. For instance, we have a lot of insulation, a lot of uh, closed cell uh, foam insulation, which is highly efficient in terms of its R value. Uh, we also are installing heat pumps, which will take uh, heat out of the air and push them into the home, so they're very efficient. We have a high efficiency boiler that's 96 to 97 percent efficient. Uh, we have uh, one fireplace and one wood stove that are highly efficient. And I would point out here, because folks that understand uh, the technology of fireplaces know that a conventional fireplace is not necessarily that energy efficient. Uh, but the one that we're installing at my home actually uh, is because it uses a, a standard stovepipe to vent and draws air from outside to combust, rather than drawing already heated air from inside and expelling it out the chimney. So there are a lot of things 
things that we're doing and it's great just to see someone else like John who's doing it and we were comparing notes a little bit and we've agreed to visit each other's homes but I think that's what's so important about something like Equilibrium TV is we can all learn about what other people are doing and share in that and, and we are so blessed to live in a state where people are interested in these things and taking action and if we can as you pointed out just a few moments ago if we can network and communicate with each other the possibilities are endless and I want to make sure that we pursue them. It's true well you're definitely someone who walks the talk. <laughs> so nice to meet you. Nice to Thank meet you, you so and much. thanks for what you're doing to help educate all of us. It's great. Thanks a lot. Thank you.